Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be filmed quite differently than all of my other videos, but since this video is all about the best and worst luxury fine jewelry bracelets in my collection, I wanted to film it in this type of angle so you can really see the details of the bracelets up close. And I have to say, I am kind of biased in terms of which bracelets are my favorites and which ones I don't quite like as much. But for this video, I wanted it to be a little bit more objective, so I came up with five different criteria to rate these bracelets on. So that's looks, stackability, ease of use, wear and tear, and of course, very important is the value for money. So I'm going to rate these bracelets on a scale of one to 10 for each of these different criteria and then average it out for you guys. So you can really see how all six of these bracelets rank compared to one another. And I am going to give you guys some ideas for stacking options too, just to have a little bit of inspiration for you guys. And yeah, without further ado, let's get into this video. To start things off, I have my small off bracelet from Cartier here, and this is probably the most popular bracelet in my entire collection. So let's talk about the looks of this bracelet first. Now, generally speaking, I won't buy any piece of jewelry if I don't think it's pretty. So most of these bracelets do rank pretty high in this category with the exception of this bracelet though, because I do feel like the love bracelet is very plain. There's nothing really spectacular about the design. Yes, you do have these screw motifs all along the bracelet, but I also feel like you could get something that is like a plain bangle from your local jeweler and it won't look all that different from this bracelet. So I am giving it a seven in terms of looks. Now, next up is ease of use. So I do think this bracelet is really comfortable. There was a span of time, probably about at least half a year where I wore this 24 seven nonstop with my small juice and clue also from Cartier, which I'll talk about next, but it's not easy to put on because you do need a screwdriver to put it on. So how you put this bracelet on is you basically lift one side of the bracelet up and then you pull the other side down a little bit and it comes apart like this. You snap it onto your wrist and this is kind of okay secure. Like you can't just pull it apart easily, but what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to use this screw that you get when you purchase this bracelet and you basically turn one of the motifs a quarter turn and it locks it into place. And when it's locked into place, that one that you screwed on, that motif should match all the other ones that are flat along the bracelet. So if you're wearing this and you're out and about and for whatever reason you have to go through a metal detector or something like that and you don't have the screwdriver, you can't actually take this off. Not to say that that's ever happened to me personally, but because it's not the most convenient in that sense, I am only giving this bracelet a nine in this category. Now, next up is the stackability. So remember how I said that it doesn't look the greatest because it's so plain, but that actually helps it in terms of stackability because this is so plain, it goes with a lot of other bracelets at least decently well. I do have my preferred stacks um, in terms of all the bracelets that I own, but I don't think it looks horrible with anything in my collection. And I also think that this bracelet does go really nicely with everything else that Cartier offers. So I do like how their range of bracelets is really cohesive. So as I mentioned, I do like to stack this with my small juice and clue from Cartier. So this is how I usually wear the two bracelets together. And I do like how this looks together the best out of all the other bracelets in my collection. So this is one option. And what I've been quite enjoying recently is stacking it with the newest bracelet to my collection, which is my Pearly Sweet Clovers bracelet from Van Cleef & Arpels. So because these two bangles are a similar width, it's really balanced when I have the two bracelets together. So because of how it is very easily stackable, I am giving it a 9.5 for stackability. So where it kind of lacks a little bit in terms of the looks, it makes up for in terms of stackability. Now wear and tear of this bracelet. 
and this is not going to be that high either because it is a smooth flat surface so it shows scratches so easily i have so many scratches on mine and i don't really care too much about it at this point but yes it does really show scratches and especially i have a lot of scratches around that one screw that you're supposed to tighten and secure and i do think it's kind of funny how you know the mechanism for tightening it actually could scratch up your bracelet and within like a week or so of owning this um as i was kind of screwing this on i actually left this really big scratch around there so it really doesn't take long to scratch this bracelet up just keep that in mind so yes because it wears quite easily, I am giving it a six for wear and tear. So that's quite low. It's even lower than the looks. Now value for money. So Cartier did recently have a price increase. I actually waited until they had their price increase in effect before I made this video so I could have the most updated prices for you guys. So this one is currently 5,100 US dollars. And in terms of how often you can wear this bracelet, you know, because of its simplicity and how easy it is to stack and how comfortable it is, it's not a really bad value and the price isn't too bad either. It's gone up by maybe a thousand dollars since I got mine. So that's like about 20% or so, but it's not like outrageous like there's been other bracelets that have gone up by more so this i'm giving it an 8.5 all things considered so when you average all these ratings out this has an average of eight so this is actually like a good midpoint when you see some of the other ratings i think this is kind of like right in the center and next up is my small juice and clue also from cartier and i love the nail design on this bracelet i think it's the perfect amount of edginess but i do feel like this is one of those bracelets where having a few diamonds on it really makes such a big difference and it's completely worth it to pay the extra money for those diamonds so they do make this bracelet with a few diamonds on the nail head as well as the tail and if that bracelet was available when i purchased this one i would have gotten that one over this one so all things considered i am giving this specific bracelet a nine in terms of looks now ease of use also gets a nine from me so it is really easy to slip on and off because this is a flexible bracelet you kind of just pull the two sides apart slip it onto your arm and then rotate the other end over and it just snaps right into place like this so super convenient to put on not like a two-step process like the love bracelet is but this bracelet does flip sometimes so i've noticed it happen a few times when i was wearing it 24 7 and when i would wake up in the morning the nail head would end up on the bottom of my wrist it's not even easy to demonstrate because it just happens over time and by no means am i saying that this is a common occurrence but just something to keep in mind um, i know that some people are worried about this bracelet warping over time so yeah there's that and also if you're layering this stacking this with other bracelets because the end the tail of this juice and clue is so thin sometimes it does end up over the other bracelet or underneath it and it does cause wear and tear to the other bracelet not this one but to whatever you're stacking it with the last thing i wanted to mention in terms of the use is people do say that this can get caught in clothes so if you have like a loose knit it can get caught in that i haven't really noticed that happening but i still wanted to mention it i think it might have to do with how i wear this bracelet because i think a lot of people like wearing it like this where the nail head is higher up on your arm but for me because i only wear this bracelet stacked with my love bracelet I actually wear it the other way around so i usually wear it like this so i feel like this makes it so it doesn't get caught in my clothes as easily and moving on to stackability so stackability doesn't rank that high because like i mentioned i only stack this bracelet with my love bracelet so that is the only option out of all six bracelets that i'm talking about today that i stack together so this is how i usually wear the two of them together 
and I feel like for the shape and the thinness of this small juice and clue, it makes it a little challenging to stack it with other bracelets because it's just not a really balanced look in my opinion. So because I never wear this bracelet alone and because I only like it stacked with the love bracelet, that's why it gets only a seven in this category. Now wear and tear, as I mentioned, when you're stacking this with other bracelet, it's not really going to cause any wear to the juice and clue. Rather, for example, if I wear it with the love bracelet, it causes scratches on the love bracelet. And I think what's great about the juice and clue is because it is this rounded circular design, you really don't see scratches on it all that much. Um, yes, maybe the nail head you'll see some scratches on because that is more of a flat surface but because this is so thin and it's completely rounded, it really doesn't show scratches, which is great. But I did want to mention that this bracelet, I don't know if you can tell from this video, but it's actually the rose gold juice and clue, not the yellow gold one. And it probably does appear quite yellow on screen because it has changed colors pretty drastically over time. Actually, I want to say that it didn't take long for it to change from a more pink gold to more of a yellow tone. To be fair to this bracelet, this is the only piece of rose gold jewelry that I've ever really worn 24 seven for an extended period of time. But I do have rose gold jewelry that is like many years older than this one and that still looks a lot pinker than this. So I don't know. I don't know if it's because wearing it 24 seven made this change or if it's some of the alloys in Cartier's rose gold jewelry, but just wanted to mention that because if I put it side by side with say my Van Cleef rose gold jewelry, you can see that there is such a big difference in terms of the color. And as I mentioned, some people are worried about this bracelet warping over time. I've never had that issue with mine, but just wanted to mention that. So factoring all the things that I just mentioned, this bracelet gets an 8.5 for wear and tear. Now lastly, value for money. So the one right here without the diamonds is 3,600 US dollars, and the one with the diamonds is 5,050 US dollars. So I'm giving it an eight in terms of value for money because it's kind of a really light bracelet. It's hollow on the inside and I never wear it alone. And plus I think the one with the diamonds is more worth it, even though there's about like 1,500 difference in price. Um, so I'm giving it an eight for value for money. If it was the one with the diamonds, it would be a little bit higher. I would say that is an 8.5, but averaging everything out, this bracelet gets an 8.3. And now for my five motif vintage Alhambra bracelets from Van Cleef and Arpels. So I have two of the guilloche ones. I have this white gold version and then the yellow gold, which I'll talk about next. And I just love this shiny disco ball effect on these guilloche motifs. You can see on camera right now just how shiny they are and it's so eye-catching. So in terms of the looks, I'm giving this a full 10 points. I just can't say enough good things about it. Now next up is ease of use. And you might have noticed that unlike my love bracelet and the juice and clue that I put on on camera, I already have this on my arm because if I were to put this on on camera, we would be here all day. I had to get my husband to help me with this because honestly, I often struggle with putting this on and different people have like different complaints about how hard this is to put on. Some people have um, struggled with putting this on, keeping the bracelet in place while they hook it on. So there is a tool that you can buy to help you keep it in place while you hook the bracelet on. I'll leave a link to that in the description box down below. For me, it's not so much that issue. Um, it's more so that I can't really keep this clasp open long enough for me to hook it on the other end. Um, I don't know, something about it, especially when I have longer nails like I do now, it just keeps snapping closed. And that happens to my husband too when he's helping me with this. 
And you can, I have been told, um, switch this class to a bigger one and that has helped some people, but I don't really want this class to stand out more than it already does. So for that reason, I decided to just stick with this one. It's not a bracelet that I wear all the time, so it's not as inconvenient as it would be if I were putting this on on a daily basis. So there's that. And another thing is because this is a chain bracelet, I do think it looks nicer, a little bit looser. So it does fall a little bit lower on my arm compared to a more form-fitting bangle. So because of that also, it's not quite as carefree as say my Love bracelet or my Juiced and Clue. So in this category, I am giving it a 7.5. Now for stackability, so these big motifs, in my opinion, um, it's not very balanced when you stack it with like a thinner bangle. So for example, if I put on my love bracelet next to it, I just don't feel like it's the most balanced type of look because on the vintage Alhambra bracelet, you have these big motifs and then you have this really thin chain. So I really do think that this looks the best stacked with another um, five motif vintage Alhambra bracelet. And sometimes you'll have basically like the other motifs on the other bracelet, just filling these gaps over here. And I think that looks really nice together. So those would be the stacks that I think look the best with this bracelet but I don't really like wearing it with my yellow gold one just because I feel like it's a little bit too much when they're together. So I don't have another um, similar bracelet to stack it with. So usually I do just wear this alone, but from what I do have in my collection, this isn't a you know like luxury branded bracelet in any way, but I do have this diamond tennis bracelet which I do think looks quite nice together. I like the contrast in the shiny metal on the guilloche motifs and then you have the sparkle from the diamonds. I think that's a really nice contrast. You know the diamonds look really white and then this is like silver. So I think this goes really nicely together. Um, this diamond tennis bracelet of mine is just a little bit thicker than my love bracelet is. So I think that also helps in how it looks together. So I have been wearing it like this sometimes, but yeah, most of the times I do just wear it on its own like this. So for stackability, I am giving it a 7.5. Now wear and tear. So wear and tear, it definitely is the lowest score out of all these five categories. I'm giving it a five because it is prone to scratches and the scratches cannot be repaired. So for example, on the love bracelet, if you wanted to polish that down, you could. It's not recommended to do it often, but you definitely could polish that down to get rid of the scratches. But you can't do the same thing for this bracelet because of that kind of guilloche pattern on it. So if you get scratches on it, it really is permanent. Um, it depends how much you mine something like that. I haven't really gotten any major scratches on mine yet, either this white gold one or the yellow gold one, um, but I feel like it would bother me, so I'm hoping to hold that off as long as possible. And another thing is I'm just not a big fan of how I can see all the little specks of dust on this bracelet. Um, I did clean them before filming this video, so maybe you can't see it too much right now, but I'm sure as I'm filming this, it's also gathering dust. I'm just not sure how well you're able to see it on camera. So it's a five. It's definitely not great in this category. And last part is a value for money. So it definitely is a better value than many of the five motif vintage Alhambra bracelets from Van Cleef and Arpels. And it does look quite nice worn on its own. So even though it is 6,100 US dollars, I do think this is pretty good value for money. It's not like absolutely amazing because I don't think really any designer luxury branded fine jewelry will get a full 10 points from me, but this is an 8.5. So 
all in all, it is averaging out to a 7.7. .7. Now, as I mentioned, this is a more objective rating. So if I was being more subjective, the looks of this bracelet would outweigh everything else and it would be a higher rating. But because I'm being objective, this averages out to a 7.7, .7, which is definitely on the lower end. And now for my yellow gold guilloche bracelet, and I'm just going to kind of breeze past this section because there's not much that's different compared to my white gold one. Um, it's the same in terms of looks. It's a full 10 points. Ease of use gets a 7.5. Wear and tear gets a 5. Value for money gets an 8.5. It does cost a little bit less than the white gold guilloche version. This one is 5,650 US dollars compared to the 6,100 for the white gold. But white gold always costs a little bit more. So I'm not going to fault that one for costing more. And I'm not going to give this one a slightly higher score for value of money either. So that's an 8.5. And the only aspect where I would say that it rates a little bit differently than the white gold version is for stackability so stackability i'm giving this 0.5 lower at 7 instead of 7.5 it's mainly the same but as i mentioned i do sometimes wear the white gold guilloche bracelet with my diamond tennis bracelet and whereas that looks really nice together this doesn't have the same effect like it just doesn't really match in my opinion. For it to have the same effect, I would have to have a diamond tennis bracelet in yellow gold with yellow diamonds. And that's, you know, to be honest, it's not quite as common and it probably costs more than that version that I have too. So for that reason, I'm dropping it by a little bit, but as I mentioned, I still do love wearing this bracelet on its own. And I love the shade of yellow gold on this guilloche motif. I actually think it looks really nice um, up against all my bags that have white gold hardware. So averaging everything out, this is a 7.6. So it's just a tiny little bit lower than the white gold version. Um, I do have to say though that this is the lowest ranked out of all of my bracelets, but I do really love both of these bracelets just because they're so pretty anyways. And next is my Bulgari Serpenti Viper bracelet, which I have in the Demi Pave version in rose gold. And similar to my guilloche bracelets, I'm giving this a full 10 points in terms of looks. It's just such a super stunning snake design. I love all the details on the scales of the snake, and I love the details on the head as well as the tail of it too. I just can't give it anything lower than a 10 points now for ease of use it's really easy to put on there's really no complaints in that aspect it's really similar to how you put on the Cartier Juiced and Clue, for example. So it just snaps right into place like so. The only thing that I want to mention is that it's a little bit smaller than my other bracelets um, in like a similar size. So I got this in a size small. I have um, the Juiced and Clue in a 15, the Love in a 16, and then my Pearly Sweet Clovers, which I'll talk about next, is in a size extra small. So they're all kind of about the same size, um, but this is just a little bit smaller than the other ones. So it's a little bit tighter on my arm, but the next size up would have been too big. And the thing with these Serpenti Viper bracelets is that there is a little bit of a variation in every single bracelet. So maybe if I got another size small, then it would have been a little bit looser. But yeah, that's the only reason that I'm taking off a half a point. So ease of use gets a 9.5. Now the stackability is the part where this bracelet kind of doesn't match up to the other categories. So it gets like a 10 in looks, it gets a 9.5 in ease of use. And the ones that I haven't talked about yet are also pretty high, but stackability I'm giving an eight because I just have nothing to stack this with. Not that I think I need to stack this with anything because this looks really stunning on its own. But I think that it needs to be stacked with another bracelet that has this similar type of repeating pattern for it to look the most cohesive. So for example, the Cartier Clash would look nice with this. Um, so yeah, because I have nothing to stack it with and it's a little finicky in that regards, I'm giving it an 8 for this category. And for wear and tear, I'm giving it a 9 because 
it's pretty good so far. I don't really notice any major scratches, even though this is like a smooth surface. Um, I've owned this for a little bit over a year at this point, and I have worn it a decent amount. Um, I've never worn it nonstop 24-7, but I've worn it a good amount both in more casual settings and more dressy settings too. So it's held up pretty well, and the rose gold hasn't changed color, but I do have to clean this a little bit more often than my other bracelets because if I take this back off, um, I think you'll be able to see that like over here, there is a whole lot of crevices and also like underneath the bracelet too, there's just a lot of little holes that can get gunked up. So I do find myself cleaning this more than I do my other bracelets. So wear and tear is a nine and value for money I'm giving it a 9 also. Currently, this bracelet costs a flat $10,000. I mean, you are getting a good amount of diamonds, and the weight of this bracelet is quite substantial for the price. So I'm giving it a 9, but it would have been higher if I was ranking this, rating this about a year ago when I bought it, because they keep increasing the price on this. So I feel like eventually, I wouldn't really think it's as worth it as good value for money as it is right now but currently it's a nine in that regards so on average the score is a 9.1 and yeah i just really really love this bracelet there is honestly not many bad things i can say about it even the ones that i mentioned in this video they're not that major at all and finally, here's the newest bracelet to my collection, which is the Van Cleef & Arpels Pearly Sweet Clovers bracelet. And I love how feminine this design is, especially in the rose gold, which is the one that I have. It's definitely the most feminine looking bracelet in my entire collection, even more so than my vintage Alhambra guilloche bracelets. And I love this beaded edge on the bracelet. I love the diamonds that form that clover shape. If I had to change something about this bracelet, which I don't even think is possible, is I wish that the clovers didn't kind of cut into the beaded edge, but I like the size of the clovers. If it were to fit completely in this kind of shiny part of the metal between the beads, the clovers would be so small that you can't even tell that it's a clover shape. So I don't want that to get smaller and I don't want the width of the bracelet to get wider either. So yeah, such a change is just not possible, but I'm taking off a half a point because that is just this really small complaint that I have. Now, in terms of ease of use, the bracelet is pretty easy to put on. You have the safety feature on the side that you open up at a 45 degree angle and then you push down on this little bead and then slide the two sides of the bracelet apart and then it comes apart like this, you snap it onto your wrist, and then you just do up that safety again. And it's really simple, you don't need like a screwdriver or anything. Sometimes I do have trouble getting the two sides of the bracelet apart because sometimes I can't push that bead down far enough to slide it apart. Um, so that's kind of one of the complaints that makes it a slight bit challenging, still not as much as the love bracelet, which requires a whole nother tool. And the other thing I want to mention is that sometimes these beads, so the one over here in the locking mechanism, as well as the ones at the centers of the clovers, they do get caught on like a looser knit sweater. I don't have that issue with the Juiced and Clue, but surprisingly, that is something that happens to this bracelet. So because of all those like little things that I mentioned, ease of use gets a nine from me. Now for stackability, it's very similar to the Love bracelet in that it goes with a lot of other things from Van Cleef & Arpels. I think this looks really pretty stacked with the other pieces in the Perlay collection specifically. And this also looks really nice stacked with the Sweet Alhambra 6 motif bracelet too. It doesn't look as nice with say the 5 motif vintage Alhambra ones because I think that these vintage Alhambra motifs are just too big in comparison to the clovers on the Perlay bracelet, but the Sweet Alhambra size is perfect next to this in my opinion. And this is not quite as versatile as say the Love bracelet is in terms of stacking, 
But as I mentioned earlier in this video, I do like the two of them stacked together. So for stackability, I am giving it a nine. Now for wear and tear, you would think that with a smooth surface like the um, love bracelet, it would scratch similarly. But surprisingly, because you have these diamond clovers that's a little bit more raised as well as the beaded edge, that metal on the inside doesn't really touch anything. So it doesn't get scratched up. Like I haven't gotten a single scratch on this bracelet, I don't think. I'm still not giving it a perfect score because, you know, eventually it will scratch but it gets a nine for wear and tear, which is definitely much higher than the love bracelet got in the same category. Now for value for money, <laughs> this bracelet is really expensive. There is no way around that. There's no denying that. It's 16,600 US dollars currently, and it is significantly more expensive than even the second most expensive bracelet in my collection, which is the Bulgari Serpenti Viper bracelet at 10,000 US dollars. And in comparison to that, that is definitely a way better value for money than this bracelet. This is just, I don't know, I don't think you get enough diamonds or enough um, gold for it to cost that much more. So it gets a 6.5 for this category. It's just really expensive, but I also do really, really like this design. And I think that there were aspects of this that definitely made up for how expensive this bracelet is because overall it does get an 8.6 which is the second highest rated out of all six bracelets so those are all the designer branded bracelets in my collection and just to do a quick roundup of the rating and ranking of all of these bracelets in last place is my yellow gold guilloche bracelet with an average score of 7.6 and then following that, we have my white gold guilloche bracelet, which is a little bit higher at an average rating of 7.7. .7. And then we have my love bracelet, which has an average rating of 8. Next up is the Juice and Clue with 8.3. And then we have the Pearl Ace Sweet Clovers at 8.6. And then the last one is the Bulgari Serpenti Viper Bracelet at 9.1. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And let me know in the comments down below how you would rank and maybe even rate all of these bracelets if you have them in your collection. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do consider subscribing for new videos every single week on luxury and fashion. And I'll leave two videos on the screen for you to watch next. So I'll see you very soon. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.